Now we're going to do our hard drive. We have a Seagate 500 gig SATA. And we're going to go ahead and put it into our case. We're going to go ahead and put it into the second bay here. We have uh, first one, second one, third one. Um, as you can see, these cables love to kind of pop up. Uh, you could go through and try to reroute them. Um, the thing I found is that it, one of them, in particular, the audio cable, um, doesn't quite have enough slack to do the full reroute. Uh, so you pretty much have to go straight through the bay here. Uh, you could go through, as you can see, there's little holes here. You could probably fool around with trying to feed it through the hole there, but uh, to be honest, I don't think it would fit. And it's just, you know, this is only going to have one hard drive, and I want it in the middle, so it gets a nice chunk of airflow from here. Um, in fact, putting it on the top would probably be even better. And, um... Uh, Actually, I think that is exactly what I'm going to do because it'll be right in the middle of this fan here. So let's go ahead and put in the top. So clamshell case opens up. What I want to show you, and this one does have it. Um, that right there is what I was trying to show you. That there is a jumper, a little gray lighter gray block. Um, it basically tells the drive here, if you go through and read um, the information on here, that if this jumper is in place it runs at 1.5 gigabits. Uh, that's not as fast as it can because it can go at 3 gigabits. So un or removing that jumper will actually make this drive faster. Um, each drive is going to be different. Um, if you have a Western Digital, it uh, might not even have that option. It may have it. depends on each make, model, yada, yada, yada. So what I sometimes use is a little dental pick to go on through, pry this out because it's not like a normal jumper that's kind of sitting out something you can kind of grab a hold of. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, pull that out real quick. As you can see now, I've gotten that jumper out of there, so it's open. And that's what the SATA connectors look like. Um, if you were watching the previous video on the CD drive installer, that's what the SATA connectors look like. Your drive would be sitting in there like this, and you have that little notch there at the bottom. So that little tiny jumper, that's it there, I'll give you an idea. That's my finger. <laughs> see how tiny that little sucker was? Um, apparently I put my dental pick in the van, so I used a very small um, flathead screwdriver, just kind of went along the side and just pushed it out. Um, key thing is you do not want to ever bend those pins in there um, because it could cause shorting out and all that good stuff. Um, another thing to note is if your system has just come in, you know, you just went through, got your parts in literally, and you're building your system right then and there. Your hard drive uh, this time of year, winter, uh, may be physically cold. You go through, you touch it, it feels cold. Um, if you're building your system, go ahead and, you know, put your system together and whatnot. Um, but if the drive still feels ice cold, or I should say pretty cool, um, wait before you start up the system at all. Um, Go ahead and give the drive, you know, a couple hours to, you know, touch a table, touch a hard drive, it feels pretty much the same temperature, then your drive is ready to go. If you start a drive up and it's very, very cold, um, condensation will build up on the inside of it when it heats up, and the life of your drive will be shortened just because you didn't want to wait um, a couple hours just for it to warm up. So, extra tip for you. So, go ahead, take your hard drive. I don't usually set them up like this, but I need to... <laughs> there we go. And just simply, if it's on the top one, it's pretty easy. Just sit it on it. You got that little piece of bent metal like I was telling you before with the CD drives. And just set it up on there. Um, the back and forth play on it is going to depend on your board. But um, I try and keep it you know, pretty much straightforward middle of it. 
Um, to make this install simple, we're going to use the two screws here, which should be sufficient. Um, remember your motor's there, it's going to be balancing that out there perfectly fine. And makes it real easy because on the other side there, there's nothing. Which means we don't have to take this thing out uh, to mount it up in there. Because otherwise, you see this screw, it's going to be hidden on the other side of the metal there. So go ahead, use the slightly bigger screws that came with your case. And that's it. Screw it in. And we get to plug it up. Once your drive is installed, um, like I said, you go through, put those screws in. Uh, be sure to tighten them down for your hard drive. Your hard drive will create the most constant vibration. So you want to make sure it's nice and tight. The CD drive, um, like I said before, make sure that's nice and tight too because it's got a lot of vibration in it. And your SATA connector, I'm going to show you one of the right head angled ones. Um, this would actually plug into the device. Sometimes on the boards, if you have like a bunch of them lined up in a row, you know, kind of like that, one, two, three, four, five. It can be real good to plug one of these in that way and go around, especially if you got one of the huge long graphics cards these days. We'll have to do that on my personal case. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this end into the uh, hard drive. And just like CD drive, it just snaps right in. The other end of it, key the same way as before. We want to go ahead, plug that into the uh, SATA 1 slot, connector, whatever you want to call it. If you are going old school and using a IDE hard drive, the cables are pretty much keyed as well. Um, they'll have a little notch at the bottom. As you can see on this IDE connector, see that little notch there? There's a little bump that's on those. Um, they go on only one way. Same thing with the hard drives. They have a little bump on them. Uh, another thing to note, because we're about to do it, with the power connectors for your hard drives. Um, we're going to use a SATA on this one, obviously. But... If your hard drive is one of those that has two um, power connectors, one for the older 4-pin Molex and one for the SATA, use one or the other. Do not use both. If you use both, you will have issues. Um, your drive may over voltage and burn itself up, or it um, may at times not shut down or go into power saving states. Uh, etc. 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 I'm going to actually take this four pin mox and kind of thread it kind of behind this hard drive enclosure some. So I'm kind of fidgeting with it some because uh, we have that fan connector we want to plug it into later. And just go ahead, line it up as best you can. In my case, it's a little bit hard because I cannot see it and have the camera in the same spot at the same time. <laughs> so, once you get that lined up, just push it on and you are good to go with the hard drive. And this one I'm probably going to have to double check because it went on just a little too easy in my opinion. But it uh, definitely looks like it's on there. So, that's it for installing the hard drive. Um, next part is we're going to put in the graphics card. And then this thing is almost done.